Hello again, welcome back to College Algebra. Today we're in section 2.4. We'll be talking about basic concepts of linear functions, the standard form of a line, and also we'll talk a fair amount about slope. Here we go. First of all, a function f is a linear function if f of x equals ax plus b for real numbers a and b. In other words, we need to be able to write our function as the sum of an x term and a constant. Now it's possible for b to be 0, in which case you just would not see the constant term. And it's also possible for a to be 0, in which case you wouldn't see the x term, but still you would have a linear function. Now if a is not equal to 0, the domain and the range will both be negative infinity to positive infinity, and we'll see why in just a second. Here's example one. This says graph f of x equals negative 2x plus 6 and give the domain and the range. Well, there are several ways to graph a linear function, but the only one that we know right now is to plug in a couple of x values and make ordered pairs and plot those to form our line. So let's make ourselves an xy table and choose a couple of x values to plug in. Of course, 0 is always a good value to plug in. And if we do that, negative 2 times 0 plus 6 will make 6. And so one of our ordered pairs will be 0 comma 6. And let's also plug in 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. So our second ordered pair is 2 comma 2. So now let's plot 0 comma 6 right here and 2 comma 2 right here. And just to be consistent with the way that we did this in a previous section, let's go ahead and get the x-intercept as well. To find the x-intercept, you'll plug in 0 for y. So here's our function, and I'll plug in 0 for y, and now we'll solve, we'll subtract 6 from both sides, divide both sides by negative 2, and we'll have x equals 3. So my line is going to cross the x-axis right here at 3. And that's what we see when we connect the dots with a straight line. And now, look, domain is all of the x values the function can have, from the furthest left, you can imagine, to the furthest right. And you can see that Every x value is included in the graph of this function, therefore the domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And range is the lowest y value to the highest y value. And again, you can see that the line is going to extend down forever, and it's also going to extend up forever. And so the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Here is a practice problem very similar to the last one that you can try on your own. So if you would like to pause the video and try this one by yourself, that would be a good idea. And now if you've had a chance to try that, let's go through this one together. This one says graph f of x equals 1 half x minus 6. Give the domain and range. Okay, so just like last time, we'll plug in a couple of different x values. And just to be sure, we'll go ahead and calculate the x-intercept as well. Now the easiest thing to plug in for x is always 0, so let's put 0 in the place of x. And 1 half times 0 would be 0, minus 6 would give us a total of negative 6. So we'll have the point 0 comma negative 6 on our line. And now let's plug in 4. I could have chosen 2, I could have chosen really anything, but in order to guarantee that I get a whole number, I want to pick a number that's easy to divide by 2. I just happened to pick 4. So now 4 times 1 half would be 2, and 2 minus 6 would be negative 4. So we'll also have the point 4 comma negative 4 on our line. And now let's calculate the x-intercept. We'll plug in 0 for y, so we'll have 0 equals 1 half x minus 6. Let's add 6 to both sides and multiply both sides by 2 and that's going to give us 12. So the x-intercept is 12. So I've extended my graph out here a little bit and now I'll be able to plot that x-intercept. Okay, we'll have 0 comma negative 6, which of course is the y-intercept, and we'll have 4 comma negative 4 as a second point on our line, and then just to be sure that we graphed it correctly, we'll have 
12 comma 0 and you can see that those form a straight line so there's our graph and now the domain and range because this is a linear function the domain and range will be negative infinity to positive infinity both of them because the domain extends as far as you can imagine to the left to as far as you can imagine to the right so it covers all the x values and the range extends as far down as you can imagine to as far up as you can imagine so it covers all the y values now here's example two this one says graph f of x equals negative three give the domain and range now again we'll use a table but this is quite a boring function it says f of x equals negative three which if of course means y equals negative three and therefore it doesn't matter what x is y is always negative three so if i let x equal zero y is negative three there's nothing to calculate there's no x here to plug in and if i let x equal two y is still negative three this is what they call a constant function because it never changes so in fact no matter what we plug in for x y is always going to be negative three now if we plot these points zero comma negative three we'll put here and two comma negative three we'll put here and so you can see that the line is going to be a horizontal line in fact if you think about it our, remember our ax plus b format what we've got here is just a situation where the a is zero so the x term has dropped out and this is what happens when the a is zero you get this flat line which we usually just call horizontal instead of saying the word flat now let's talk about domain and range remember domain is the x values from furthest left to furthest right and of course this time the domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity but the range is all the y values from lowest y value to highest y value and notice that we only really have one y value here y is always negative three so we don't even need interval notation to write the range the range is just the single number negative three so we'll put that number in curly braces because remember we only use brackets and parentheses when we're talking about an interval but here we're talking about just one number it's not an interval at all and so the range is curly braces negative three curly braces now here is example three this one says graph x equals negative three give the domain and range so notice this one is not f of x equals a number this one is x equals a number negative three so what we're missing here is we're missing a y we don't have a place to put y and we're in the situation where no matter what we use for y x is going to have to equal negative three because that's all we've got so when you make a table uh, no matter what you choose for y your x has to be negative three and i've just chosen a couple of numbers for no particular reason so when y is 0, x is negative 3. When y is 4, x is negative 3. Let's go ahead and put those points on our coordinate system. You can see that these form a vertical line. And notice that this is not a function because remember the vertical line test for functions? If a vertical line can be drawn that touches the graph more than once, it's not a function. And this is a vertical line. So of course a vertical line touches this more than once. So this is not a function. Notice it doesn't have a y in it. Notice that the x value negative 3 produces lots of different y values. So it violates the definition of a function. But it still can have a domain and range. So the domain here is all of the x values that are part of the graph. And the only x value that's part of the graph is negative 3. And the range is all of the y values from lowest to highest. So the range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, here are a couple of graphs for you to practice with. So pause the video and give these a try just for a second. And if you've had a chance to do that, now let's go through them together. This one says graph x equals negative 1. So in this case, every point on our line has the same x value. So we could plot any point on the line as long as it has an x value of negative 1. We could put uh, negative 1 comma 0, and we could have 
negative 1 comma 3. It only takes 2 and then we can connect the, the dots with a straight line. And now let's get the domain. The domain is all the x values, so in this case the domain is just the single number negative 1 and the range is all the y values from lowest to highest. So in this case range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now let's graph f of x equals negative 2. Remember that f of x doubles as the notation for the y. So in this case, every point on our line has a y value of negative 2. We could plot 0, comma, negative 2. We could plot 4, comma, negative 2. And that's going to form a horizontal line. And any point would do as long as it has a y value of negative 2. They're all going to form this horizontal line here. Now the domain here is furthest left x to furthest right x, so negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is just a single number, which is negative 2. Now we're getting ready to talk about the standard form of a line. So let's make sure what we mean by standard form. In this text, we will agree that if the coefficients and constant in a linear equation are rational numbers, then we will consider the standard form to be ax plus by equals c whenever a is positive, and a, b, and c are all integers, and a, b, and c have no common factors. In other words, they are mutually prime. In other words, they can't all be divided by the same thing. So this is standard form. You have your x and your y terms both on the left side of the equal mark. You have your constant on the right side of the equal mark. A has to be positive. If A were not positive, I would just multiply both sides by negative 1 so that A could be positive. A, B, and C all need to be integers. If A, B, or C were fractions, I would multiply both sides by the common denominator so that everything became an integer. And a, B, and C can have no common factors. If they did have a common factor, I would divide both sides by the same thing so that they no longer had a common factor. And that's what we're going to call standard form. Now let's look at example 4 together and notice that this equation is in standard form. The x term and the y term are both on the left side of the equal mark. The constant, which is 0, is on the right side. A is positive. A and B and C are all integers, and they cannot all be divided by the same thing. So this is in standard form. We're going to graph this line, and then we're going to give the domain and range of our graph. So let's start out like we have previously, and let's try to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and we're going to notice something interesting. First, the x-intercept, we'll let y equal 0. If we put 0 here in place of y, we'll be left with the equation 4x equals 0. We'll divide both sides by 4, and that will give us x equals 0, which means that our x-intercept will be here at the origin. And now let's do the same thing for the y-intercept. We'll plug in 0 for x, which will leave us with the equation negative 5y equals 0. Divide both sides by 5, and you'll find that y also equals 0. So our x-intercept and our y-intercept are the same point. And that means in order to see where the graph should go, we're going to need to calculate another point on the line. Now, you could plug in whatever you want for x and then calculate your y, or you could plug in whatever you want for y and then calculate an x. But it's a little difficult to do that or to know what good choices are for x and y until the equation is solved for one or the other. Since it's kind of traditional to solve it for y so that it looks like a function, let's go ahead and do that now. So I have moved the 5y term to the right, and now I have 4x equals 5y. And now since I'm solving for y, I'll divide both sides by 5. And that gives us y equals 4 fifths x. Now I can choose any convenient value I want for x, and a, a number that's convenient to plug in for x is going to be one that's easy to divide by 5. So how about we choose x equals 5? And that way, y will equal 4 times 5 over 5. The 5s will cancel, and y equals 4. So the next point on our line needs to be 5 comma 4, which is here and we'll connect those dots with a straight line. 
And now you can see that the domain of this line is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And you also can see that the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And that's it. Now here's a practice problem that's very similar to the previous example. If you'd like to pause the video and try this one by yourself, I encourage you to do that. And now let's go through this one together. This one says 3y minus 4x equals 0. Now notice that this one's not quite exactly in standard form because the a, the coefficient of the x term, is negative, but still we do have sort of standard form where we have the x and the y terms both on the left and we have the constant on the right. Anyway, we can find the x and y intercepts from here. And when we plug in 0 for y, we find that x is 0. And when we plug in 0 for x, we find that y is 0. And just like before, we see that the x and y intercepts are both 0, which means the only point on the line we know right now is the origin. We know that this line goes through the origin. So we'll need to calculate another point on this line. So we'll need to plug in something of our own choosing for either x or y. It's easiest to do that when the equation is solved for one variable or the other, and we usually like to solve for y. So let's move the 4x to the right side so that it's positive, and now we'll divide both sides by 3, and we have y equals 4 thirds x. Now the easiest kind of thing to plug in for x is going to be something that's easy to divide by 3. So if I let x equal 3, then y will be 4 times 3 over 3, which is just 4. And so one of the points on our line is going to be 3 comma 4, which is right here. And we'll connect those dots with a straight line. Now the domain here is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity and the same thing for the range. And what I want you to notice from both of these examples is that if the right side in standard form equals zero, it means your line is going through the origin and then you need to calculate one other point to go on your line to know which way it slants. Here I've inserted a couple of examples that are not in the book just to make sure that you know how to do this when the right side is not equal to zero. In this case, we'll have an x-intercept and a y-intercept that are not the same. So let's find the x-intercept by letting the y-coordinate equal zero, and that will give us 2x equals 10. Divide both sides by 2, and that will give us x equals 5. And let's go ahead and find the y-intercept by letting x equal zero, and that would give us 5y equals 10 and divide both sides by 5, and we find out that y equals 2. So our x-intercept is 5, that's going to go right here. And our y-intercept is 2, that's going to go right here. And now we can connect the dots with a straight line, and there's our line. Of course, the domain and range are both negative infinity to positive infinity. And here is another one. You could try this one on your own if you want to, and let's go through it together. This one says negative 4x plus 3y equals 12. So we're going to first find the x-intercept by letting y equal 0. If y is 0, then negative 4x equals 12, which means x equals negative 3. And now let's find the y-intercept. We'll let x equal 0, and that's going to give us 3y equals 12, which means y equals 4. Okay, our x-intercept is negative 3. That will be a point right here y is 4, that will be a point on the y-axis here, and we connect the dots with a straight line. Now we are ready to talk about slope. Slope is a numerical measure of the steepness and orientation of a straight line. Not only does slope tell us how steep a line is, but it also tells us whether it slants uphill to the right or downhill to the right. Whenever you think about slope, think rise over run. Slope is always written in a fraction format. So the top number represents the rise of the line between two points, and the run represents the horizontal change between the same two points. Rise is the vertical change, run is the horizontal change. And slope is always denoted with the letter M. So now let's take a look at the slope formula. 
the slope m of the line through points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is given by this formula. The slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now notice that y2 minus y1 would just be the vertical change in the line, and x2 minus x1 would just be the horizontal change in the line. So that's where we get this idea of a rise over run, the vertical change divided by the horizontal change. You can also sometimes see it written as delta y over delta x. In the Greek letter, delta is traditionally used to represent change. So this says change in y over change in x. The same idea as rise over run. The same idea as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is the formula that you'll actually need to memorize. Now here's just a note of caution. When using the slope formula, it makes no difference which point is called x1, y1, and which point is called x2, y2. However, you must be consistent. It's okay to say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It's also okay to say y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. What's not okay is to say y2 minus y1 over x1 minus x2, or the other way around, we can't say y1 minus y2 over x2 minus x1. So you just have to be consistent and make sure that you either start with y2 and x2 or you start with y1 and x1. Also, make sure you have y's in the top and x's in the bottom. Remember, rise over run. Also, let's go ahead and mention horizontal and vertical lines. A vertical line is all rise. It has no run. So when you think rise over run, the run part is zero, and you'll end up with a number over zero, and that's always going to be undefined. So we always say that a vertical line has an undefined slope. On the other hand, for a horizontal line, it's all run. There's no rise to it. So when you think rise over run, the rise number is zero, and the run number is whatever. So zero on the top of a fraction is just zero. So we can say that a horizontal line has a slope of zero, while a vertical line has an undefined slope. Now let's use our formula to find the slope of a line through the points negative four comma eight and two comma negative three. So the first thing we want to do is label our points x1, y1, and x2, y2. And I also like to sketch the points, so I'm going to sketch negative 4, 8 here. That's x1, y1. And I'm going to sketch 2, comma negative 3 here and draw the line between them. Now it would be easy from here to count slope as rise over run. And in fact, this one has a negative rise. If we start with the point on the left, the rise is down. So actually a negative rise and the run is to the right. So we could count it that way. Let's go ahead and put it into our formula. Uh, y2 is negative 3 and y1 is 8. So we'll have negative 3 minus 8. And in the denominator, x2 minus x1. So 2 minus negative 4. Now minus negative makes plus, And we end up with negative 11 for the top. Negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. And in the bottom, 2 minus negative 4 is positive 6. So our slope is negative 11 over 6. Now here's part B of example 5. And this time the two points we have are 2 comma 7 and 2 comma negative 4. So we'll go ahead and label our points just like we did before and we'll go ahead and sketch them. 2 comma 7 is going to be here and 2 comma negative 4 is going to be here and you can see that these are going to form a vertical line. Now remember I told you that the slope of a vertical line is undefined so we're going to plug it into the formula but it should come up undefined. Let's see. Okay so m is y2 minus y1 which would be negative 4 minus 7 and in the denominator we have x2 minus x1 which is going to be 2 minus 2 so we end up with negative 11 over 0 which is in fact undefined. Let's look at the next one. Here we have 5 comma negative 3 and negative 2 comma negative 3. Now go ahead and label your points 
and then let's plot them. 5 comma negative 3 would be right 5 and down 3. Negative 2 negative 3 would be left 2 and down 3. And you can see when we draw that, we're going to get a horizontal line there. And we know in advance that this slope should be 0. Let's go ahead and try to see if we can make the formula tell us that. So the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's going to be negative 3 minus negative 3 over negative 2 minus 5. In the top, negative 3 minus negative 3 is 0, and in the bottom we have negative 7. Of course, it doesn't matter what we have in the bottom because 0 divided by any number is 0. So we do have a slope here of 0 because it's a horizontal line. Now I'd like to talk to you about how to find the slope of a line by looking at its equation. If you have the equation of a line, it's not necessary to use the slope formula. When the equation is solved for y, the slope will be the coefficient of the x term. Remember all linear functions can be written in the form ax plus b? Well, whenever you have that form, the slope is equal to the coefficient of the x term. In other words, the slope is whatever number is in the position of the a here. So because this coefficient is the slope, we frequently write a linear function as mx plus b instead of a because remember the letter m stands for slope. Now let's take example 6 which says find the slope of the line 4x plus 3y equals 12. First I just want you to notice that this equation is in standard form. a is positive, the a and the b are on the left side of the equal mark, c is on the right, and there's no number that goes into all three of these numbers. So we can say this is in standard form. Now the easiest way to find the slope is to solve it for y. So let's move the 4x to the right side and that of course is going to turn it negative and now let's divide each term by 3. That gives us y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. The slope is the coefficient of the x term. So slope in this case is negative 4 thirds. Now I want you to try this one by yourself. Take the line 5x minus 2y equals 10 and see if you can find the slope. And now let's go through it together. So if we have 5x minus 2y equals 10, what we want to do first is solve for y. So let's move the 5x to the right side. That's going to turn it negative. And now let's divide each term by negative 2. That leaves us with y equals negative 5 over negative 2 which simplifies to positive 5 halves and then 10 over negative 2 is minus 5. So our slope is going to be 5 halves. And now let's talk about how to graph a line when you know the slope and a point. All you have to do is put a dot at the known point, then use slope as rise over run to find the next point, and then connect the dots with a straight line. Let's practice here with example 7. This one says graph the line passing through the point negative 1 comma 5 and having the slope m equals negative 5 thirds. Let's go ahead and put a point at negative 1 comma 5. We know the line has to go through that point. Now the slope of this line is negative 5 thirds and I want you to think about that as rise over run. So from any point on the line we should be able to go down 5 and right 3 and reach the next point. So from here, down 5 and right 3, 1, 2, 3, and that's our next point and now we'll connect those two points with a line. And that is the graph of that line. Let's try it again and this is one where you could pause the video and try it on your own, but now I'm going to go through it with you. This one says graph the line passing through the point 3 comma negative 4 and having slope m equals positive 3 over 2. So let's put a point at 3 comma negative 4. That's going to be right 3 down 4. And now let's use slope as rise over run. That means from that point or from any point on the line, if we rise 3 and run 2, we'll hit the next point on the line. So from here, rise 3 and run 2 
and that is our next point. And now connect those two points with a line, and that's all there is to it. Now let's talk about the orientation of lines whose slopes have different signs. A line with a positive slope will rise as it goes from left to right. That's because for any two points, if the rise is positive, the run is also positive. But a line with a negative slope will fall as it goes from left to right. That's because its rise is negative when its run is positive. On the other hand, a line with a slope of zero neither rises nor falls. So that's going to be a horizontal line. And a slope of a vertical line is undefined. Because remember, a vertical line has no run to it. So it's always going to be all rise, which means its bottom number is zero, which means it's undefined. Now the reason this is important is because when you're using the slope formula, it's important for you to have a way to know whether your answer is reasonable or not. If you plot two points and they show that they're going uphill to the right, then you know that your slope should be a positive number. On the other hand, if you plot two points and they're going downhill to the right, you know your slope should be a negative number. So always when you're working with slope, keep the graph in mind and use what you know about slope to help keep you from making silly little errors here and there. Good luck.